Good evening. Welcome to the Sanctuary of Sharon United Methodist Church on this Maundy Thursday. Maundy comes from a Latin word meaning commandment. For it's on this evening when Jesus gathered with his disciples, he said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. We invite you to enter into a time of worship now. As always, if you need to contact me, please feel free to either write your comments on the, in the comment box down below. You can contact me directly. My email is revpharris at aol.com. If you're on Facebook with me, you can send me a messenger that way as well. Tomorrow on Good Friday, through the magic of uh, video, I've re pre-recorded a reading to be included in the Good Friday service brought by Zion Lutheran Church at Chelsea, Michigan. And they'll be posting that tomorrow online. Go to Zion Lutheran dash Chelsea comma MI and the service will be there. On Easter morning, I invite you to be with us at 1030 as the story unfolds. I want to begin with this disciples following him as he moves toward the cross, even as he wraps a towel around the waist, even as he kneels to wash the filth from the feet of his friends. We are Jesus' disciples, longing to be faithful even as the night grows dark, even as betrayers loom, even as the powers that oppose the way of Christ press in around us. We are Jesus' followers, struggling to love others even as Jesus has loved us. We are Jesus' disciples gathered here to worship God. Come, let us be present to the Lord as the Lord is present to us. First lesson this evening comes to us from the book of Psalms, Psalm 116. I'm reading tonight this psalm from the translation called The Message. I love God because he listened to me, listened as I begged for mercy. He listened so intently as I laid out my case before him. He listened so intently. Death stared me in the face. Hell was hard on my heels. Up against it, I didn't know which way to turn. Then I called out to God for help. Please, God, I cried out, save my life. God is gracious. It is he who makes things right, our most compassionate God. God takes the side of the helpless. When I was at the end of the rope, he saved me. I said to myself, relax and rest. God has showered you with blessings. Soul, you've been rescued from death. I, you've been rescued from tears. And you, foot, were kept from stumbling. I'm standing in the presence of God, alive in the land of the living. I stayed faithful, though bedeviled. And despite a ton of bad luck, despite giving up on the human rights, saying, they're all liars and cheats. What can I give back to God for the blessing that he's poured out on me? I'll lift high the cup of salvation, a toast to God. I'll pray in the name of God. I'll complete what I promised God I'd do, and I'll do it together with his people. When they arrive at the gates of death, God welcomes them whom he loves. Oh God, here I am, your servant, your faithful servant. Set me free for your service. I'm ready to offer the thanksgiving sacrifice and pray in the name of God. I'll complete 
what I promised God I'd do, and I'll do it in the company with his people, in the place of worship in God's house, in Jerusalem, God's city. Hallelujah. This, my friends, is the word of God for the people of God. For tonight, our gospel lesson is a reading from St. John, the 13th chapter. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who instructs the hearts of your faithful by the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. John chapter 13, it begins like this. It was just before the Passover feast and Jesus knew that his time had come, come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you'll understand. And Peter said, no, you'll never wash my feet. And Jesus replied back, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter said, not just my feet, but my hands, my head as well. And Jesus said, look, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. And he asked them, do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher. You call me Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. John goes on in the next few, chat, few uh, verses, first to be, uh, predict his betrayal. And then he says these things, picking up at verse 31. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I'll be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I'm going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. It's the night when we, we talk about washing our feet. Have you ever had your feet washed? Yeah? No? 
What were the circumstances? Do you remember? As a kid, somehow I'm running about, I had a nail go right up through the sole of my shoe into my foot. And I remember how the, the first aid required the, the careful removal of my shoe and, and then the sock being gently peeled back and then a careful washing. I remember it was done with great care and great tenderness. What is it about foot washing, particularly here in the church, that, that makes us so hesitant? Washing feet is pretty, it's pretty intimate. In, in some way, if you think about it, the, the feet, they, they represent the whole body. It's, consider your, your feet carry an enormous load. It, it's been said that the average person will walk the equivalent distance of, of three times around the globe in their lifetime. The foot itself, very complex, 23 bones, 33 joints, over a, more than 100 muscles and ligaments and tendons. We know how it is. If, if your feet don't work well, it, it affects the, the rest of you as well. Whenever, however your feet go, the rest of you follow, right? If your feet hurt, I don't know about you, but when my feet hurt, it seems like my whole body hurts. If your feet are cold, then... I don't know. I just feel cold all over. And my wife laughs at me, but that's why I wear socks at night because I get cold. My feet get cold. And if your feet are dirty, it's hard ever to feel clean until, until you've washed them. There's something intimate, something revealing when it comes to feet. And so we heard in our gospel lesson from John 13, could it be could it be that, that Jesus wants to show us how intimate he desires to be with us in assuming the role of a servant, serving us in this most basic and, dare I say, intimate way? Jesus approaches. Think about it. Would, would you let him get close enough to wash your feet? And, and if you or if I, if we are reluctant to let him get close to our feet, would we let him get close to our hearts? Would we let him get close to our attitude, to the way we treat one another? And so it is that the disciples arrive at the place for dinner and there doesn't appear to be anybody who who's there assigned the task of, of washing their feet. It, it was a common courtesy of the day uh, to offer a basin of water to, so that in the everyday walking about, your feet get dirty, you've got a place to, to get the dirt of the road off your feet. But on this night, on the night before Good Friday, on this night, there, maybe they were Maybe they were distracted, distracted of the past, cloaks out as they came into Jerusalem. On Monday, we can read in the gospel narrative how, how Jesus walked into the outer courts of the temple and, and he made a, a whip and he drove everybody out because he said, you made, you made my father's house a den of thieves. Back and forth, he's staying out in Bethany. He comes into Jerusalem, he goes back out. We see when we read what's happening, there's healings, there's teachings, there's following Jesus all week long and the disciples, maybe they're just tired and maybe just a bit distracted. When we read in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we read there about this night, they all include a meal. They, they talk about this night being the last supper, the night before his betrayal the night before his arrest. Never do those three mention foot washing. It's John. John who mentions nothing about uh, a Last Supper. Rather, he focuses on something else. Jesus knows that, that the Father, as we heard, the Father has given all things into his hands. 
And so the thing that he takes into his hands is the most humble thing of all, a pitcher of water, a basin for washing dirty feet, a towel for drying. With these humble objects, which offer an equally humble, humble action, uh, and in so doing, Jesus models to us what it means, what it means to follow him. He shows us what it means to love. See, to follow Jesus is to learn how to love as he first loved us. It's something that we learn. And the way most of us learn is because somebody else has shown it to us. See, that's the way love works. When we love someone, think about it, when we love someone who becomes injured or, or somebody who falls ill, if they're your loved one, your spouse, your child, no task is too menial, no task is beneath you to, to perform it. See, love bathes broken bodies, it, it empties pet, bedpans, it, it cleans up the bed, it fixes the meals, it does whatever is necessary for the comfort and to add to the healing of the other. Love, love makes the phone call. Love goes out and shops in these days. Love checks in with your neighbor. Love stands out in the front yard to say things like, are you okay? Can I get you anything? It, it gets on FaceTime or, or like today it happened. So one of my granddaughters in Delaware can say, Papa, I love you. I miss you. Love is learned. We learn how to love or we see someone showing it to us. It was during the meal that Jesus got up, he took off his outer cloak, as we heard, he wrapped a towel around his waist, and he approached each disciple with that basin and a pitcher of water. I wonder, I wonder how they felt. You know, you're, you're the fourth one in line, or the eighth one in line, and he's working his way around the table. What were they thinking as they see their, their friends getting their feet Are they, I don't know, are they ashamed because they're think, some of them are thinking, I didn't offer the basic hospitality when we came in. Maybe some are just feeling guilty because they've been distracted by, by so much else going on. Others may be confused. Confused. What is Jesus doing? What does this mean? And so we read how he came to Simon Peter and he said, Simon Peter says, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And, and Jesus says, look, you, you don't realize now what I'm doing, but, but later on you're going to understand this. And Peter says, oh, let me understand something right now. There's no way, Lord, you're going to wash my feet. And Jesus says, and I, and I wonder what the tone of voice was. I think Jesus challenged him back and said, look, unless, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Oh, well, if you're gonna wash me, Lord, well, don't wash just my feet, wash my hands, wash my head. And Jesus said, no, oh, you're missing the point, Peter. You had your bath earlier today. It's because you walked here, your feet need to be washed. Of course, there's something else going on too. I mean, the question is, look, Peter, you, you who have done so much in your walk with Jesus, will you now receive even more from the master? Yes. We'll read on and, and, and Peter's going to know the full measure of this new commandment to love as as Jesus has loved. He's gonna learn it in the days yet to come. I suppose Jesus could have given us this picture, this, the principle of what it means to follow him at any time. Uh, John here in, in chapter 13 reports it to us on this night, the night before it all comes unwound. 
the night before the prayer in the garden, the betrayal with a kiss, the soldiers who come to arrest him, the hanging over to Pilate, the beatings, the crucifixion, washing the feet, it's a cleansing, it's a, it's a washing, right? And, and I think one of the things that John wants to call to our attention is to make us think, where else do we use water? Oh, we use it in baptism. See, when we see Jesus extend the hospitality of, of washing the feet before entering into the house, uh, the, before the dinner that's been prepared, is this not the way of baptism? Baptism is the way into the life of Christ, the way into the church. And so what, when we humble ourselves to accept the gift of washing, we're ready to enter into the life of the body of Christ and there to learn what it means to love as he first loved us. See, we learn it. It's progressive. We, it doesn't come in one uh, fell swoop. You know, we learn how to love just as we learn how to follow. And so it is, friends, that Jesus comes to each one of us and he offers to make us clean, to, to wash the stain of sin that no water could ever remove. For it is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world who humbles himself even unto death upon the cross. Why? That we might be made clean. Washed, clean. Oh, by water outwardly, but by the blood shed upon the cross inwardly. I suppose if, if all this night is ever about is what's happening on the outside, then, then really nothing much happens. We wear, you know, we wear shoes and socks to protect our feet, to keep our feet clean. If, if all that, the, the, the pitcher and the basin and the towel, if all that, uh, if all that means, these external agents, if all they have to do is, is an act of, or a symbol of cleanliness, then what Christ has done and what Christ continues to do is our role in the church as those are baptized in Christ. Then, then none of that, none of that will have any value. On this night, it, it isn't enough to say, hey, you know what, I like the idea of Jesus washing feet. I really like that idea. I like John chapter 13. I, I like the fact he washed those disciples' feet long ago. I like the fact that he, he got intimate with his disciples in this way. I just don't want Jesus washing my feet, right? And so um, this year, because we're separated and this means, hey, you're all off the hook, right? And as long as we keep our distance from the intimacy that Jesus desires, from Christ. All the knowledge and the religious experience in the world, it makes no difference. See, it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of holiness, not hygiene. It's, it's a matter of lives stained by hate and, and fear and guilt who these lives get washed clean. It's a matter of, of being separated by a deadly virus. And then Jesus, through the church, can, being connected by grace, offered life in Jesus. A new command I give you, he says, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Will you let him love you this night? You know, right where you are this evening, if you're watching him, in your mind's eye, go there, you see him approaching. He's washing the feet of your friends. And now he comes and he kneels down before you. Will you let him get this close? Will you let him get this intimate? Will you let him love you and show you how to love one another.
will you? In the third century, there was a great thinker, Bishop, his name was Origen, and he wrote this prayer, and as uh, I invite you to come with me in this moment of prayer, this is a prayer for foot washing. Oh Jesus, my feet are dirty. Come even as a slave to me, pour water into your bowl, come wash my feet. In asking such a thing, I know I'm overbold, but I dread what was threatened when you said to me, if I do not wash your feet, I have no fellowship with you. Wash my feet then, because I long for your companionship. And yet, what am I asking? It was well for Peter to ask you to wash his feet, for him that was all that was needed for him to be clean in every part. With me, it's different. Though you wash me now, I shall still stand in need of that other washing, the cleansing you promised when you said, there is a baptism I must need to be baptized with. And so it is this holy night, Lord, draw near to us. Draw near to us. For we want to receive the closeness of your companionship, the intimacy of your great love for us. Show us, Lord, what it means to love this night. So what does it mean to love this night? He gives us this example that we might meet the needs of our brothers, and sisters, the needs of our spouses, that we might love. I hope you'll find ways to love, tangible ways to meet real need, to take on the role of a servant. Stripes upon his back, 
Basin and towel are signs to us of your son's servanthood. You have made us partakers of Christ and of one another. And as we move into the darkness of this night, grant us grace to witness the sacrifice of self-giving, to hear the call of Christ, to count others more important than ourselves, to love our enemies, to be people who make peace. Send the spirit of truth to keep alive in us what Jesus taught and did that our words may carry his good news, that our lives may bear the shape of the cross of the one and only Son, who lives and reigns with you, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen and amen. 